A lot of Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 leaks over the last couple of days. It's going to be design leaks. Kind of makes sense. We're not close to the Samsung Galaxy Unpack, but supposedly it's going to be a bit earlier this year in July that might try to at least get a cut into a little bit of the excitement over the Pixel Fold as Google will be coming out with their device at the end of June. Samsung might want to say, well, hold on, wait a minute, wait, wait for us, wait for us, see what we have this year before you make you, your foldable decision. Uh, the design leaks, though, weren't exactly exciting. To me, it doesn't look like it's going to be a major refresh or a redesign at all. A couple different ways to look at that. They've basically been using this design on the Fold device since the Fold 3, there was the refresh last year, which gave us the larger outer display, which did change the experience, at least for me, quite a bit and made it a lot more usable and a lot better. So I like the design change, but it, at the same time, using the same design, I can't exactly go with a, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it mentality, because they gave us the second year of this design. I do think there are other ways that they can improve this. They made the outer screen usable, but still not the preferred experience. I could get through an entire day without being completely frustrated by it and type on it, but it's by no means my preferred choice of doing things, especially when you see things like the Vivo Folds and the Huawei devices and all, and even the Pixel Fold, if you believe the design rumors, that have a much wider outer display that's a lot more usable for different apps and keeps them in kind of a proper aspect ratio and gives you more room for your thumbs. The thing is that even though they're keeping the, the width of the device the same, the Fold 5, 67.1 millimeters, I believe, they think they're going to be able to get some more outer display size again this year by reducing the bezels. And you can see there, there is some room still to reduce the bezels. If you make the hinge even thinner somehow, you can reduce that, and there is some bezel on either side that you can still cut down on to get a bigger display. Perhaps that's what they're going to do. I didn't think it would make a huge difference last year when I heard the actual millimeter size of it, but it wound up making a big difference. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt again this year. But I can I really hope the Pixel Fold is released and eats their lunch. It's a first-generation device, so it's going to be asking a lot. They're coming in at the same price as the Fold 5, which I think is going to be a mistake, or at least the Fold 4 now if there is no price change for Samsung, which I think is a mistake. But Samsung needs some sort of competition at this level here in the United States. Are there some compromises with those other devices, with the Huawei devices, particularly with the Vivo devices? Yes, they have less of a crease, but they also have kind of a binary fold. It's either open or it's not. There's no ability for the kind of tent modes on those devices. So the hinge technology, I do believe, is better on the Samsung device, despite the, uh, the, the crease being less noticeable on those overseas devices. So perhaps there's a gap there. But I do think Samsung's just kind of resting on the laurels as far as the Fold 5 is concerned. You've seen them do it with the S22 line, uh, S23 lineup of devices. Not the most inspiring high price you can say what you want. You know, their sales weren't fantastic. They had all those troubles moving chips. Now, that might have to be with them reducing the Exynos, but they say it's because mobile shipments aren't quite what they thought and they all, the, all the mainframe stuff as well. But there is some segment and weakness in the mobile marketplace that we're experiencing now. I think that's going to, to play into this a little bit as well. I like the Fold 4, one of my favorite devices of this year or last year, but it does need something else. And it, I think that it, the outer display is one of those things. But the inner display, the internal display, I just don't... Viewing content this way in landscape isn't bad. But I do think there are things they could do with the aspect ratio to make it a little bit better. To make the app experience and the multitasking experience a little bit better. You can multitask a heck of a lot better in landscape. But with the crease, it just feels unnatural to me doing it that way. I always want to multitask this way. And it seems like with the Google Pixel device, because they're going squatter and a little wider, that you'll be able to get more of a landscape experience open in regular mode and be able to get multitasking that kind of respects the aspect ratio of the apps and what they want. Get kind of a full experience like we were talking about with the Surface Duo. That's part of why I love the Surface Duo. I can have a full app open on either screen and not feel like I'm missing something on either one of them. I don't really get that with multitasking on the Fold 4. They've improved multitasking with the dock, and I could switch between apps a lot more easily. You get the picture-in-picture, -picture, which works well. 
those are things like that. But as far as just having having multiple apps open at the same time, I do still think the Samsung Galaxy devices fall behind their competitors when it comes to that. So if that's something they could work on, that would be great. But I don't think they're going to do any of that. I think they're going to come out with a Fold 5. I think it's going to look like this. I think the outer display is going to be a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to be pleased with it because I am like the bigger outer display, whatever they give us. But it's kind of like, well, we're captive and they give us a little nugget of something. We get excited when it comes to Samsung with these Fold devices. S23 Ultra was a lot of money. And they didn't give us, uh, you know, they gave us better stuff, but it wasn't that much better. The Fold 5, similarly, is going to be a lot of money. And I don't think the upgrade incentive is going to be there from the Fold 4. I don't think the trade-in offers, being as the mobile division is, is having their issues, is are going to be that strong again this year. I think they lose money with that, and they, and they realize that. But I don't think they're going to cut prices to kind of give you a balance there between what they used to offer you with the trade-ins and what they offer you now. So the price is going to be the same. So you're going to be paying more. For the same, and there's going to be other players in the marketplace. There's going to be the Pixel Fold. Perhaps an overseas device entices you because they're giving you the same thing essentially for $1,800 again. That's going to be a tough choice. But I, I was a little disappointed that they weren't taking a bigger swing. Either make the entire device bigger and give us better aspect ratios or futz with the screen and futz with the device itself. This is nice. It's compact. But again, I don't love either ratio. I could get by with the outer display now. But I don't feel like either one feels completely natural for apps. I, I, I find myself falling into the trap of just using this as a big screen for the one app, which is fantastic, by the way. It's wonderful. But is it $1,800 wonderful? <laughs> That's a decision everybody's going to have to make. Let me know what you'd like to see on a Fold 5, what you liked on the Fold 4. Are you okay with them keeping it, just rerunning it? A lot of people might be. There was nothing wrong with this device, so that, that might be an option for a lot of people. Or do you want to see them take some bigger swings? If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.